um, we know that in the early stage of an epidemic, or if an epidemic is uncontrolled, that you're going to get very rapid growth in the number of cases. You're going to get exponential growth in the, in the number of cases. And so the first step that we took as a, a modeling group uh, was to uh, forecast what that unmitigated epidemic might look like. And that's where the very early numbers of if we couldn't control the spread of this disease, you might see as many as uh, 15,000 cases in Ireland by the end of March. And that's also where the drive to flatten the curve came from. And that unmitigated situation, uh, that worst case scenario, is uh, displayed uh, as the black curve on the chart here behind me. So there was that very strong drive to, to flatten the curve with a series of escalating public health measures uh, introduced uh, over the last two weeks. And I suppose in one sense, uh, the good news is uh, that we are far below that unmitigated uh, scenario. Uh, so as today, um, when we're announcing uh, 295 new cases and 2,910 cases in total, uh, even though you, that's a concern to be announcing any increase in cases at all, we have to remember that in an unmitigated scenario, we would have been looking at perhaps 3,000 new cases uh, today and 15,000 cases in total. So that the measures that the state has imposed and the public have really uh, complied with very, very strongly are having an enormous effect on the number of actual cases that we're seeing now today. Another very important marker that we're monitoring is in the very early stages of this epidemic, there was a day-on-day -day growth rate in new cases and cumulative cases of 33%. So each day you were seeing 33% more cases than the preceding day, and therefore the numbers were mounting up very, very quickly. If you look back over the last week, just taking the average over the last five days, that rate is down to 15%. And that is actually a huge decrease uh, in the rate uh, of exponential growth. And the last thing that I want to say about, about modeling data at the moment is that it, we know that it's going from the characteristics of the disease that it's going to take at least 7 to 14 days for any given public health measure to have its full effect. So we should be seeing the effects of early interventions like school and university closures now, uh, but it will take some time well into next week before we see the full effect of the measures that were taken uh, last Friday. So this has allowed us to revise um, our short-term forecasts and the different colored lines behind me are what we would forecast for the next uh, week or so out to the 12th of April under different assumptions and different scenarios. And the model is very sensitive to the assumptions that we make and these assumptions are based on the best available data. And I just want to say two things in, in, in closing. Um, I, I know that many of you are going to want me to be able to make some firm prediction about the future over the coming weeks. Uh, when will some surge come? How big will it be? It's just not possible to make that prediction at this time. And the reason is, as I say, the models are very sensitive to assumptions. We don't know yet what the full effect of the measures that have been taken will be. It's very heartening to see the level of public compliance with them, but we need another week to 10 days to fully understand that those measures that people have taken, how much they suppress uh, the spread of the disease. Uh, the second thing I need to say is there is no room for complacency. We've got the growth rate down from 33% to closer to 15%. We need to get that very close to zero in order to manage uh, this outbreak. And then my final comment is, the work that I'm presenting here today uh, is done by a team of over 50 people from across uh, the university sector and other agencies. Uh, I'm simply representing their work and I, I'm really grateful to them for what they've done uh, under the circumstances to date.